Hi everyone, welcome to Cheltenham Chart episode 20 and today we'll talk about a few things. I put a couple of bets up this week, we can talk about them and why I put them up. We'll talk about my perspective solution to all these horses being entered in multiple races, what I think we could try just to help that situation. Talk about Nicky Henderson's form. The amount of times that under control has been taken out, Constitution Hill. Talk about Blood Destiny. And then just finally maybe talk about uh, Banks for the festival, how I'd play them over the festival. It is close to the festival now. It's very exciting for most racing fans as we get closer to the festival. We'll get the five-day decks very soon. So we'll just get on and get through all those things uh, in the rest of the episode tonight. So, uh, sadly for me, I've given up hope of uh, Gala Marceau being taken out of the mayor's hurdle. And as I feel she has no hope of placing, uh, I'd started to put up a couple of bets for the festival. Uh, so last week I put, put up just two bets um, when the handicap weights came out on Milan Tino for the Boodles. And that's a race I don't usually do well in. But I just felt he was very well handicapped, the JP plot hopefully down 10 pounds trained in france i just feel he's well handicapped whether he can win off that mark i don't know but i knew he was going to get backed i knew i'd be on a horse who had a decent chance at price that was over the odds really and that was the reason behind putting him up geo vinkle i've just always had a this feeling in my mind that he was going to go to a handicap when he after he was beaten by stay away fay i thought well he can't win the brown now, really. I don't think he, he'd turn that far around with Stay Away Fay. I don't give him much chance of beating Mount Monty Star or Fuck to File. And I do feel it's a, a bit of a cop out to say he'll go to the brown if Apple Away gets in because surely the horse has to be given the best chance to win a race at Cheltenham. And his best chance to win is off a of mark one for six in the Ultima. He really would be unlikely, in my opinion, to beat the three horses in the Brown Advisory at the top of the market. I really can't see him doing it. So those two were put up. If Gallum or so was to come out, then I would be left with two non-runners and two bets totaling £50 with 350 to play. I'd probably play a couple of bets on the Tuesday and go from there. But that's the reason the two horses were put up, because I just feel that Gollum or so will run. That will only leave me 290 in my bank. And um, I may just put one bit up then for the remainder of Tuesday, see how we've done and go from there on the Wednesday. That's my plan at the moment. I don't really know my plan for the videos at the moment, when they would go up. But I will try and put that in the next video, which may come out around Friday or so. But I'm not really sure about the video schedules when I put the daily previews up and when I'll put the bets up for the next day or on the day of the races. I know that's not good for most of the viewers for me to put bets up on the day, but the problem for me is that I want to give myself the best chance of winning and I have to hear from everybody that I hear from and then piece together the jigsaw from there. And if I put together a bet and then all of a sudden I get something coming in from someone who's got some sort of information and I don't have that information at hand, then I end up putting the wrong horse up. I have in my mind a lot of horses that I'm going to back, but I really want to make a profit. I want to make a profit because I want to prove that a nobody like me, a golf caddy that just puts a bit of effort in can do well. Because I see this preview circuit at the moment and there's it's a bit like a circus and there's a lot of people making a lot of money and for me, it's almost a bit wrong, but people pay for what they want to pay for. And if they want to go to these things, then that's up to them. My intention on the video is to try my hardest to put up some winning bets. Now, if I don't, I don't. I've done it in the previous years. I've made plenty of money out of the bets I've put up in the previous six years. And I know I'd get a lot of stick if I didn't. And I know there's a lot of people not really happy that I that I have continued the sequence and really hoping I will fail. And that's okay, but I will do my best 
to keep the sequence going this season. So I have to say today that I was really keen to see how Under Control would run. Like I say, I just want to do well when I put videos up. And even when I put up stuff for other channels, I like them to do well. And I put up Under Control on the, Chel on the Cheltenham Exchange as my handicap hurdler for Cheltenham. And I want her to win because of that. And I really wondered why her price was going out today. I couldn't understand. Now, she was taken out on Bet's advice, so I'm not really sure what that's about. If that's about the same sort of thing as Constitution Hill's got, or <clears throat> was it a slight stone bruise, something like that. Who knows? But I would hope she would go to the county hurdle, and I'll certainly be in her camp if she does go to the county hurdle. As for the Constitution Hill thing, it's extremely disappointing and I see a lot of Irish people, you know, almost delighting in the fact that Nicky Henderson's horse might not get there because Henderson and Buckley have kept him away from the track a little bit and I'm not sure it's by design. I think it's been a little more of like, I don't think he's been as well a horse as people would think, but they all go on about, oh, Stateman's been out and done this and that. Uh, and the basic fact of the matter is the best horse that Stateman's beaten this season is Bob Bollinger because Imperia Pass has been a bit of a passenger all season and the only two other horses he's beaten are Echoes in Rain and Phil's Do Dairy oh, and one other, uh, Pied Piper. I mean, they're hardly world beaters that he's beaten in these races. So when people say that Stateman deserves to win a champion hurdle, I have to disagree. He's beaten absolute trash in these races in Ireland, in truth, this season. Last season, yes, I'll give him that he beat ha Honeysuckle, but this season he's beat absolutely nothing. A horse that's completely gone off the rails this season. Uh, echoes in rain, I mean, you know, you know, I wouldn't, wouldn't be, you know, screaming from the rooftops that you've beaten Echoes in rain. So for me, like, people saying that State Man deserves to win a champion hurdle, but I I think they're well off the mark. Is Henderson out of form? I'm not, I don't think he is. I, I think he's running horses who aren't the class to go to Cheltenham. He had a winner today. He had Jungle Bay with second as well. And I think he's just keeping all his big guns back. There could be some sort of problem in the yard on certain horses. I hope that's not affecting some of his big guns. I hope Constitution Hill will make it. Clearly, State One will be the favourite should he not make it, but it won't be much of a spectacle and um, it'll be very disappointing for me if uh, Constitution Hill doesn't make the race. On to Blood Destiny and uh, I have to admit, as Town End was looking around for non-existent dangers today, waltzing up the hill at Navin, I couldn't help but think they've missed a trick here with the Arkle. I really, really believed in this horse all season. I thought this was their Arkle horse. I think he would have gone there with a great chance for me. His jumping wasn't even great today, and he's won pulling a cart uh, and a carriage of a train behind him. He absolutely bolted in. Everyone who's talked about Spillan's Tower, now I know that wasn't Spillan's Tower's distance today, but Blood Destiny is a really good horse. On better ground, I think he'd jump out of it better. I think he... I think he would have had a great chance. And to be honest, although people will disagree, I think even with only a 10-day break, I would I would give it a go if I was Connections. If I was the owner, I would think I'd go in and say, yeah, let's give this a go. Let's go for it. But I think they're going to go to Fairy House two weeks after, give the horse a month break. But for me, I don't know why this horse hasn't been targeted at the Arkle. When you look at Illite Tom and possibly Hunter's Yarn, this horse jumps the best of the three. And I thought, I just thought he won so easy today. I'm so, so, so disappointed that this horse isn't going to Cheltenham. I think he would have gone to Cheltenham with a serious, serious winning chance. Uh, and I can't hide my disappointment that he isn't going to, going to go to Cheltenham. I really can't. Um, I hope that he consider, but I, I don't think they will. Getting on to the... The Bali Barn, Mystical Power, etc., etc. Um, debate and the, the Willie Mallon's bingo. People have said, what is the 
options? What can we do to, you know, stop this a little bit? And I know this suggestion won't go down well with the, the race courses and the BHA and that and the people who take the money for entries. But for me, I think if you want to enter your horse in one race at Cheltenham, you should pay your entry fee. And if that's £500 at the January or February stage, then you pay your £500 or your £1,000 or whatever the entry fee is for that race. But if you if that's a graded race, then you pay that fee. But if you want to enter a second graded race, I think you should have to pay five times the entry fee for the next graded race. And if you want to enter a third graded race, you have to pay 10 times that entry fee. And similarly with handicaps, the first handicap you want to enter, you pay the entry fee for that. And if you want to enter two handicaps, you pay five times the entry fee. And people will say, well, these owners have plenty of money. Well, if I was paying £800 to enter the Supreme and the trainer came to me and said, well, I want to pay another 4000 to enter the Ballymore, I'd say, well, which race do you really think you're going to go for here? Do we really need to be paying out for nearly £5,000 in entry fees? I think you would see a decrease in the double declarations. I certainly see them collapsing in triple cal uh, declarations. I'd see it as a possible way out of this. Now, people are saying... You know, you could be betting on which races Willie Mallon's horses go to. So I, I was having a try today, and I think I'm not really a fan. I don't think Tally Hill will win, whether he goes to the Supreme or not. I don't think he'll be going anywhere else. So my calculation of the top Mallon's horses is that Ballyburn will go to the Supreme, probably with Tally Hill. Maybe some of the others, like Mr. Giff. I think that. Townend will ride Ill Atlantique and Walsh will ride Mystical Power in the Ballymore. And I think reading Tommy Wrong will probably go with High Class Hero and a couple of others to the Albert Bartlett. That's how I see it. You can let me know what you think of my suggestion of making them pay more as they enter more races to try and deter them from having this options of just messing people around right until the last minute. I know the race courses won't like that because they'll want the entry fee for each race. And they don't want to deter people. But, of course, on the flip side, they're going to get five times for a second entry. So the ones that don't double enter would be counteracted by the ones who pay five times an entry fee. So I think that might be a little bit of a solution to the problem because it's getting out of control. It's being caused by going to a diluted festival. There was nothing wrong with the three-day festival. It's just money grabbing to get people in. And of course, that brings other things into play because they haven't sold tickets this season at the same rate as they used to. So is Cheltenham becoming a bit of a bore fest because the races are uncompetitive now? There's far too many over the past few seasons where we've had like six, eight odds on favourites in the, the graded races. That isn't good for racing either. So, yeah, that's my suggestion on how you cut down the declarations for the races. The final thing I want to talk about today, well, there's two more points. I want to talk about betting banks, and I also want to talk about the handicapper and, and a certain horse. Okay, so we go on to the handicapper. Now, I'm absolutely fuming about the mark. Percival the Galba got probably won't run now. I'm on him, no non runner, no bet, but I'm I'm confused by the handicapper. Uh, he comes out with like a hype like Percival the Galba. Yeah, he'll say he thought he was going to win last time out. Now then he came out with a, a remark. I'd like to I'd like him to uh, elaborate on this remark. He said he didn't believe the runs of Good Time Johnny over fences. Basically. He was trying to say that Good Time Johnny was being plotted up over fences. And I'd like him to comment on why he's dropped Langer Dan again. I think that this horse must be one of the most loathed horses 
in horse racing because everybody knows what is going on and the handicapper is allowing it by just dropping the horse every season so that they can run well at the big festivals like Cheltenham, Aintree uh, or the Scottish National Meeting at Air. And I find that very frustrating. If you can turn around to a trainer like Tony Martin and say you don't believe the runs of these horses, why can't you turn around to a trainer like Dan Skelton and say I don't believe these races, uh, I'm not dropping your horse, he's 152 and you staying at 152 because you did this to me last year and then he's won the Coral Cap or he's won, he's run second in the Martin Pipe. So you're clearly just trying to cheat me here and uh, I'm not having it this season. But he continually drops the horse. And if he can say to Tony Martin, I'm not dropping your horse or I'm not giving you your Irish mark, then why can't he say to Dan Skelton, I'm not dropping your horse? Why does he keep dropping it when he's been made a fool of three times already? I really don't get that. I know that that's me ranting about one horse in particular. And I know there's lots of horses that are doing it, but it's a very public way to do it by doing it at the big festivals and continually running the horse in unsuitable races on unsuitable ground and then claiming that the horse is coming back to form. I don't think that's... I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Ronan McNally, but he got the horses well handicapped and then they went up the rankings. And yes, he got his knuckles wrapped for it, but I don't see Dan Skelton and the owner getting their knuckles wrapped for this. I don't see the handicapper getting pulled in by the BHA for why he keeps dropping the horse. Maybe I'm out of line here, but for me, I'm sick fed up. I've seen Langer Dan cruising into contention in big races after getting dropped for no apparent reason when everyone knows that they're just running the horse out the back to get his handicap marked down. Anyway, ranted on enough about that, but uh, yeah, frustrates me. So finally tonight, betting banks. People have asked me about a betting bank. Oh, it's a very individual thing, really, a betting bank. But as you know, I bet out of a bank on the videos. But they're my top bets. And they're very different to how I'd bet with just money for Cheltenham. With, say, a £400 bank for Cheltenham, I'd definitely try to dig out my best bet two days before the meeting and say, right, this is the one I really think is going to win. I'd have probably between 60 and £80 pound of my bank on that horse. If there was two of them, I'd probably put two £40 pound bets or two £50 pound bets off. And then the remainder, I would split between the four days of the festival. So if it was £300, pound, I'd have £75 pound a day. If it's £320, pound, I'd have £80 pound per day. I'd probably, after the first day, betting maybe a lucky 15 and a, and a few single bets see how much I got returned on the first day now if I did get my money back I may put another 20 pound of each of it so that I had a hundred pound for the final three days uh, and I'd, I'd put the other 20 aside and then any money I got back after that from the hundred pound each day I would keep for the next festival and any money I got back off the big bet I would keep for the next festival as well. There's no way I would just keep rolling it up even though I had £80. Say I got my £80 back on Tuesday and I got my £80 bank back on Wednesday I wouldn't put that in and say right I've got £160 for the last two days I wouldn't do that at all it would be still disciplined and uh, keeping the money for another day i don't think you should just go crazy because you're getting a few winners and um, that's the the quick way to the pool house and what the bookies like because then you end up putting a few extra bets off you wear ahead you should be still ahead you're not so then you start putting more bets off out of the money and it just deteriorates from there so you have to for me that's how i would play a bank and um I would just keep the winnings out of the bank. I've always actually kept the winnings out of the £400 banks I've had for these videos. And when I see like that I have £1,800 in that bank from all the bets I've put off from when I originally started with £400, I 
that's when I realised that if I do lose my £400 this year, then I'm still £1,000 up over the videos. But I will endeavour to do better than that, of course, and I hope to make another profit. That would be absolutely fantastic. It doesn't make me a great gambler. It just means that I managed to pick a winner or two at the festival. and I'm disciplined enough to get those two winners into a profit by trying to mix and match those bets into a winning formula but it's it doesn't mean that I'm any better at picking horses than anyone else because I think most people are very good at picking horses it's just how they bet on them that possibly gives them problems and it could be that this year the way I pick them could get me into problems as for the videos I'll do my best to have a nightly preview of the next day at least and I'll try to get the bets up as soon as I can out of the bank um, it would be very very nice to hear Gallimard so wasn't going to run and give me an extra £60 to play with but at the moment that doesn't look likely like I say at the end of this video I can't stress enough how disappointed I am about Blood Destiny I've loved this horse all season and to see him win today like that with the Oracle nine days away was just a bit disappointing. The other horses I've loved this season, Halka did a pair out uh, and won't race again. But who knows, maybe the big, big horse from the start of the season can maybe come back. And uh, from the dead virtually, Iroko, who knows, I'd love to see him win. I think if he's... If he's back to proper full fitness, even with only one run, he will give us a massive run in the Turners. Now, we're not on him for the videos, but, well, everyone saw me saying how much money I had on him and how much I'd lost, so could be that maybe my video bets won't do well, but like if Iroko won, I don't think I'd really care how my video bets did because I've got such good odds on him for the Turners, so... Hopefully he will run. So anyway, yes, it's so close now, very, very close to the festival. And uh, even though you're really, really excited about the festival, it is a worry that like the four days of the festival go so fast and then it's the absolute deflation when you get to the Martin Pipe of knowing it's a whole year till the next festival. But let's look forward to this one at the moment. I can't wait for it now. It's really close. Putting a couple of bets up this week probably made me a little bit more excited about the festival. I am really excited to try and make a profit. I mean, there are no guarantees in racing. and You could make the best of picks and have a lot of bad luck. Or you could make just bad picks. Or, hoping for the best, maybe we'll get a few winners. So, thanks for watching. Enjoy the next week of the build-up. And I'll be back to you probably around Thursday or Friday with the next video. Well, probably Friday because I'm going to do the under starters orders preview with them on Thursday night just for 15 minutes and then uh, probably my own video on Friday and then we'll start doing the daily previews probably next Monday so thanks for watching hopefully this isn't too long a video and um, good luck with any bets you're having at the moment and uh, we'll see you next week bye for now